What's going on everyone? Welcome back to another Monday Scale News Update. This week was a little bit lighter on new releases and news, but we've got a few other things to discuss, but let's first jump into what we saw new this week. Now I think the biggest release that we saw this week was the Incision 90mm Scale Shocks. These are shocks that you would use on your 1.9 size trucks, something like the SCX-10 or SCX-10-2 versions. Uh, this shock does have a few features that do separate it a little bit from some of the other options available in that same size. We do have a seven millimeter scale bore. It's a threaded shock body. It's all aluminum cap body and lower cartridge. We do have machine shock pistons, three millimeter polished shock shaft, and dual X-ring lower cartridge with machined washers in there. It also features an oversized top shock bladder to help compensate for the shock shaft displacement of the shock fluid. Now on that threaded body, there is a preload adjuster as well as another locking ring to make sure that that preload adjuster doesn't move. The lower spring cup and rod end have a keyed design. So a 2.5 millimeter screw goes through there to make sure that that spring cup a cannot fall off and B can't get knocked out of place. The shocks come pre-assembled but without shock oil. You will have to add your own shock oil to these shocks. In the package you will find a top mounting ball to make sure that you can mount these into your vehicle and get a smooth operation without having to use something like fuel tubing. Also in the package, there is a lower spring cup and lower rod end without that keyed feature in case you run into an area where you don't have the clearance for those extra parts. You'll also find two optional machined shock pistons in there in case you wanna change the dampening rate. With the release, we will also see two new optional spring rates as well as rebuild kits popping up available in the following week as well. So the shocks will be fully supported and you'll be able to find any of the parts that you need to make sure that they're always running smoothly. The shocks became available for sale on Friday night. The retail price is $49.99 per pair. For links to the shocks, you can find them in the description below. Another piece of news outside of the scale off-road market, but Tamiya released their new 6x4 tipper truck. Just a really cool looking dump truck style rig. Always kind of wanted one of these big rig uh, style trucks. Although I just don't know that I would ever find myself driving them. However, the detail and options that you can add to those trucks just seems so appealing and I find those things really cool. So I don't know what you would actually do with one of these trucks, but if you're like me and you still kind of want one, links in the description below. And for those of you who are big Axial Honcho fans like myself, Knights Customs released a number of new products specifically targeted at the Axial Honcho. I think most notably will be the 3D printed front grille setup. Now, this setup gives you functioning light buckets behind the headlight area and gives you that new 3D grille area that really sells the Toyota look without just using a sticker. Now, to install that front grille, you will need the grille and lenses. The grille parts sell for $27.47 and the light lenses sell for $12. $12.11. Links to all of those new Honcho products are listed in the description below. And that kind of did it for new releases this week. So I threw out a post online asking for any quick topics that we could cover to kind of round out this week's scale news update. I figured I'd go through some of those questions, give my quick responses, and we'll wrap up this week's video. JJ Dreeling had put tools, specifically bench tools versus trail tools. Now, as far as bench tools go, I just want all the tools, all the tools, all the time. You can never have enough tools when you're in a you know bench or garage type situation. But I think trail tools can be a kind of interesting topic and how bare bones you can really get. So if I'm on the trail with my backpack and tools, what I usually want to have with me is my 1.5, 2, and 2.5 millimeter drivers, as well as a small pair of needle nose and maybe a set of side cutters. Also, of course, a wheel wrench. And then along with that, I wanna carry some zip ties and a pill bottle full of just a bunch of assorted hardware and lock nuts. Usually if I can't fix it with a set of zip ties or some spare hardware, it usually might mean a walk back to the truck. The only other things that I will carry is spare rod ends. Those are usually the only thing that I'll find breaking as far as a part like that goes. That is something I can replace easily on the trail. I don't like to carry a ton of tools while I'm on the trail because I'd like to try and keep the weight down as much as I can. Normally, my backpack is full of camera gear, snacks, water, things like that, and I just don't wanna add 
all the extra stuff. Uh, I try to keep it as bare bones as possible. You have to let me know if there's any other little things that you guys carry that might be a good addition to that bare bones trail tool pack that you guys might carry. Josh Kittle had posted the question, how do you feel about all the brass parts being popular now? Brass beef patties and spring rotators are one thing, but brass structural parts, steering knuckles, C-hubs, portal covers, steering horns, I'm interested, but still on the fence with this. So I think that's an interesting question. I like brass in some situations, but I don't love seeing a brass in like a high stress, mostly unsupported type situation. You know, brass in a, an actual bushing type situation makes sense, although it does wear because it is a softer material. However, there's just times when I don't think it's that great of an idea. And I also really sometimes shake my head at just the application where they're used specifically. The one that I saw this week that I thought was the most interesting and seemed completely crazy was a brass chassis cross brace for the Traxxas TRX4. The Traxxas TRX4 can have a higher center of gravity because it has portal axles, but adding more weight high up on the chassis like that in general just doesn't make sense to me. I have seen more people adding more unnecessary weight to TRX4s in places other than just the portal boxes than I have seen on almost any other truck. I have noticed with a lot of Traxxas TRX owners who are specifically new to the market are not interested in looking at other trucks and what has been proven to work in performance on those other trucks versus theirs. So a lot of things that are being done on those TRX4s are going way back to way before we knew what we knew now about the performance and how well you can make these trucks handle without just adding as much weight to the front of them as you can. Josh Spendlove posted, do you think all these off-brand crawlers are hurting the market or discouraging people from continuing in the hobby? Where do you see the next big thing coming from, General and RC? So off-brand crawlers can kind of be up in the air as far as what you mean by off-brand. Now, if I was going to think off-brand, what I would think of is some of the like specifically direct knockoffs like the Twin Hammers we see a lot of. And then we've also seen direct knockoffs of like the original SCX-10 from Remo Hobby, for example. Now, I definitely don't think that that does the hobby any good in general as a whole. However, at the same time, someone who was looking at spending $100 or $120 on a full ready to run truck is probably not the person who was going to buy the $399 truck anyway. But at the same time, there is a possibility that they would. They just saw something that looked very similar and purchased that anyway. I'm sure that we do lose people that could have been really good members of the RC community to situations like that. However, if all they were concerned about was just saving as much money as possible to get their very first completely ready to run vehicle, they're probably not going to spend a lot of time in this hobby just because as a lot of us know, it's not exactly the cheapest hobby to be in in the first place. As far as where do I see the next big thing in RC in general, I think that we're in the next big thing. Scale is the big thing right now and I think it's going to continue that way. I think that we're also just going to see the scale realism expand more and more to the other areas. And I think in general, RC just has this pendulum effect of going towards more scale and then kind of losing its way and going towards complete performance. And then you end up with these crazy spaceship looking buggies and uh, rigs in general. And then it all kind of swings back to its roots, making these cars look like miniature versions of full-size vehicles. So I think that we'll see that bleed into the other areas of RC. The Traxxas Ultimate Desert Racer is a really good example. I mean, the fact that Traxxas is spending time on scale realism in general says something. Because as big and as much of a bully as Traxxas can be at times, that doesn't mean that they don't have a really good idea what the market is doing and where the emphasis should be put. It will be interesting to see if we see more rigs come from them in other areas specifically with more scale realism to it. You know, in bashers, I don't know how much you can really ever expect to see, but maybe we'll see other cars that are released in just different areas that have a little bit more realism. But no matter what, I'm excited to see more scale in all areas of RC from all companies. For as much complaining as people do about how much drama there is in RC, you don't have to let it get to you. You don't have to participate in it if you don't want to. I truly think that right now 
is the best time there's ever been to be in RC. I think those few topics were good enough to round out this video. Always fun to have a little bit of discussion. Let me know if you have different feelings on any of that stuff in the comments below. As always, guys, have an awesome week. Thanks for watching. Like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe if you aren't already. And I'll see you on the next one.